Good, I mean, good, at, good. at the end of the day, what will happen is the richer, the richer countries, they'll probably get the vaccines first. Yeah. Yeah. They'll, just, they'll, just, they'll just, you know, pay, pay it all out. Yeah. I mean, I mean in some cases, it's a good thing. Did we come oh, back to the podcast? Yeah, no, yeah, guys. We have gone from. No, that's okay. That's okay. To... Yeah. yeah, I have three questions, and then. Uh, yeah first one uh, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to ask about sort of the advertising and the social media part of it where um, okay. like uh, at what point during the process were you aware of um, or, like how did how did that whole thing happen I'll tell you all my thoughts they can just keep talking after that at your stage after that it's just one thing was like when did you start planning it another thing uh, maybe um, what was the plan in like in, in its essence and uh, also how would you measure success like this is for all of you how would you guys measure your success in terms of uh, on social media yeah and no not yeah. that as well as the app in, in itself okay. and yeah go on. so when we start I think right from the point development began uh, someone asked a question of how we're going to sell it and the questions of advertising came up we don't have money you know because we don't right, have the money to like take out a bill of order, take out an ad in the paper. And luckily nowadays, social media campaigns are very normal. I think uh, I brought up, you know, a lot of films open up Instagram pages when they're marketing. So we kind of took a cue from that, as well as general companies that use Instagram and Facebook to market themselves, and represent themselves uh, as an entity. Uh, so pretty much in the point, I think concurrently with development, I was doing developing like our advertising stuff as it was we're developing the app. Um, so yeah, to answer that question, I think right around the point development began, it was a very collaborative process. Uh, your second question, sorry, can you just remind me what it was? Just like, what was the, what was the plan? Like how, how, how are we going to do this? Okay. Um, I think the fake said we should do posters, which I and everyone else here appeared to write from the get-go. It was a great idea. Um, so I said, okay, I'll handle that. And, I I was involved in the arts. I did theater and stuff like that. So I'm more I'm generally I think of myself as a creative person, but I didn't have experience in like graphic design. Uh, so I wrote to my sisters living in the States. It was like, hey, do you mind? We kind of split the load so you can get this done. You do some, I'll do some, and we'll talk about it and we'll go back and forth. So I collaborated with her a lot um, on doing that. So the general plan was we use posters mostly for Instagram. Uh, that was more kind of aesthetic. If you go on there, it's mostly posters as well as little announcements in the caption. And our Facebook was for general updates. And then at some point, I think the big again suggested we use the Facebook to kind of like share ongoing events specifically related to COVID. Um, which, yeah, makes sense. Our thing is born out of COVID. You might as well use it as a secondary position to kind of keep people updated, keep people informed so we can help people stay safe. So... Yeah, I think if you go for a Facebook and Instagram, it works very deliberately to keep them distinct, but without one, but both maintain relevance to kind of what we do here and and camera as a whole. And yeah. I guess success-wise, I mean, social media, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Success is our visibility. You know, our followers is an obvious indicator, but also how many people are talking about us. On Facebook, we get a lot of, likes from people who aren't following or a lot of people are messaging us. So it's, it's, it's been amazing to see that people are responding positively to it online. And for sex, success, I'll let the, the guys talk about the app since they're the ones who really wrote it. Well, yeah, like I would say in a more general sense, success I think goes beyond just one segment of our app. I think it's everything in general, like we encompass everything. I guess the best way we would define success in my opinion, would be comparing what, you know, we started with and what we're at now. Because it's very easy for you to say, I haven't made any progress. I haven't done much. I haven't done, you know, like, it's, it's like when you do exercise and you say, okay, I don't see any results. I'm not seeing myself go to the next step, right? But you need to compare what you started with and what you're at now. You know, it's, it's, it, that's a better attitude. It's like glass half empty, glass half full. And 
of course, in a more generic way of measuring success would also be the number of users we have on our app, the number of requests that are completed, and also the number of successful requests. Yeah, that's and, my and, opinion. Yeah, and, and also, I guess another point would be the number of active, uh, the, the number of users, right, on Goodhood, the platform which we're, which we're um, with right now. So yeah, we, we do have that data and I think uh, it, it might be outdated, right? But uh, last, we, last we heard from uh, when we spoke with Nigel was that there are um, over, correct me if I'm wrong guys, but uh, six, over 6,000 users, right? But that was, uh, uh, I think it might be outdated, but we'll, we'll definitely yeah, get back was, to you on that. It, it was more than 6,000 users on Goodhood. Yeah. On Goodhood itself, yeah. So there, yeah, as Atisha said, you can, the, there are quite a few metrics that uh, you can take into account. You can look at number, number of users, number of requests made, number of successful requests, even how much time requests take to get fulfilled, mm. right? You, you, can, you, you, can, you can take that into account as well. Uh, you can, you be, uh, this, this might be borderline invasive, but looking into the <laughs> nature of the requests as well. So, <laughs> You know, you yeah, know yeah. What, what, what what exactly is being requested? Um, you looking looking at uh, what what kinds of uh, the demographic of you know the types of people that request these things. So so there's a, a a lot with any online service. There's a lot that you can tap into. A, a lot of metrics that you can use. Obviously, you have to be transparent with it to to yeah. your users and mention that you are taking this data into account. There's um, definitely a lot of trust involved. Yeah. So I, I mean that th those are the specific metrics you would use, but and in the in a way that's kind of an extension to what Atisha was saying, and that you're looking at where you started off, where you are now, so how much you've grown, and where where you think you can be in the future. Hmm. The, 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 that's basically that kind of three step process that we try to work towards. Um, Re result oriented, yeah. Yeah. In a way, yeah. So this is a hypothetical question. You you might you yeah, you don't have to answer it, but um, what you guys did was essentially <laughs> help the community. And uh, obviously, we spoke about why this works in Singapore. But hypothetically, if you were asked to do what you guys did in this community for another community in another country where the situation of the pandemic was a lot worse, like how would you approach it? I mean. Okay. Yeah, I would say that. We can go with India if you want, but yeah. Okay, like yeah, looking at any other place, we would have to be, we would ha like, uh, we would have to be just a bit like a lot more careful, because the main the main problems we were having, like we had like hours and hours of talk about this, was because we're we're getting sensitive information, we're getting their address and we're getting their phone numbers we're getting their um, requests. Like even, even though you don't see that as something as important, but many people are very conscious of what they buy. Yeah. Like, like for example, yeah. So like there's a lot of households would be like very conscious of that. So we had to be sure that the, any of these three things weren't misused or weren't compromised, like yeah. compromised. Yeah. yeah. So like with Singapore being such a, like a safe and, a uh, secure place where like everyone has a really good idea of solidarity. It was like, it was easier to, um, to like, like for example, like uh, Nigel was telling us about a story about like how in Singapore, like if you give someone uh, like with using our context, if you, if someone gives another person their address, like it, they would be like, they would feel safe doing that. But if you go to like India or any, like any other place, I wouldn't even say like India specifically, any other place, you giving your address to someone, that would be very risky, especially mm -hmm. if you're like, especially for people who are like elderly, like it would be very, I think if we were to release this app to another place, we would just have to be very careful with who we let into that, like that circle of the app. So like yeah, you would yeah. have to have better checks, more background information. And like, obviously this is not going to be bulletproof. I'm just thinking of like the top yeah. of my head, but like we would have to know a lot more about the person than we 
can right as as of now. Uh, yeah, I so think we go ahead. We'd have to place a big emphasis on cybersecurity as well because mm -hmm. Singapore, of course, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's less likely mm -hmm. that we'd be prone to cybersecurity threats. I think also um, a big part of it is just trusting five 18 year olds with your information. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, I mean, the attitude towards like kids our age and youth in general in places is very, very different. I think one of the reasons we were able to do this is because I don't think there is a particular attitude towards teenagers here because you know generally we're well behaved um mm -hmm. but like think about america where like every day you read about you know some drug drive or some irresponsible thing there's no way that people generally would trust teenagers with sense of information uh yeah, hmm. i don't yeah, know that's that's definitely specifically about india or other places but i think a lot of the fact that we're in singapore and the fact that we're doing this the location and the idea of very was very serendipitous how it all worked out um mm -hmm. Hey guys, thank you so much if you enjoyed that episode. I hope you uh, liked the video. And if you can subscribe, that would be amazing. You don't have to watch the video, just subscribe. And uh, we're trying to get it to 100 as soon as possible.